Okay, step four in our workshop one for Excel 2010 is to do some simple formatting. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to select some ranges. We're going to select what's called a non-adjacent selection, <clears throat> which of course is the opposite of adjacent selection or a true range. So the first range I want to select is B4 through F4. And then I want to select B7 through F7. Now you might ask, how did I get to manage to select two separate ranges that are non-adjacent, meaning they're not next to each other? Well, the way I do it is I'm going to select the first range. I'm going to press Control on my keyboard. I'm going to hold that down. And while my Control key's down, I'm going to click and drag the range I want. And let go of my mouse, and then I let go of Control key. My selections are made. Now, uh, once these are selected, I'm going to do some simple accounting formatting. I'm going to come up and I want to change these to uh, accounting format. I'm going to come up to the number group and click on the dollar sign right here. As you can see, if you cursor over it, it'll give you a screen tip as to what it is. I'm going to click this and it applies that accounting format. As you can see, the dollar sign is off to the left. Now, my next range I want to select is all next to each other, so I'm going to select B5 through F6. And in this format, I want to format this with comma style. As we can look at the numbers, they're just all running next to each other, not separated by commas. So I'm going to come up to the number group and click on comma, comma style. Step five in our worksheet instructions is to insert a new row between five and six. Well now, if I want to insert a new row between 5 and 6, where do you think I should have, uh, or which row do you think I should have selected? I want to remind myself that wherever my row is selected, the new row, or the blank row, will appear above the selected row. So if I had 3 selected, it would insert a blank row between 2 and 3. So I want one between 5 and 6, so I'll select row 6. I'm going to right click here on the header, number 6, and click insert. That's just one way of inserting a row. There's other ways. But for the meantime, we're going to go to A6 and we're going to type in Dallas. I'm going to press tab. Tab takes me over to the end. And then in the totals row, excuse me, the totals column, I want the formula that is here to appear here. Well, I'm going to go to F5 use my fill handle and fill this down and that fills the formula down in step six we're gonna go to cell G4 and we want to put in a uh, formula here that will divide our total by our grand total to come up with a percentage in order to do that I'm gonna put in an equal sign to begin my formula so I'm gonna do equals this cell which is our total for Austin divided by our grand total, which is F8. And then press enter. And there's our percentage. Now something I want to remember to do is that I need to think about what absolute cell referencing is and relative cell reference it is. Now, the cell F8, I need to make that cell absolute, meaning that my formula, as I fill it down, will always refer back to this cell. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to make sure my insertion point is here after cell F8, which is the one I want to be absolute, and I'm going to press the key on my keyboard, which is F4. When I press F4, it'll absolute cell reference this cell. Now from here, I'm going to click the enter check box up here. It keeps this. Click and drag this down to G7 and it gives us our percentages. Now if I click on any one of these particular cells, I'll see that, yes, that cell was still uh, absolute referenced. Step seven in our instructions is to insert some uh, spark lines in a range of H4 through H7. So what I want to do is click to drag to select this range. Once I have that selected, I'm going to come over to my Insert tab, and I'm going to look over in the Spark Lines group. In my Spark Lines, I have Line, Column, Win, and Loss. 
So I'm going to click line and it's going to say what data, data range do I want to use. And in this case I want to use B4 through E7. So I can just type that in. B4 through E7. And then the, uh, it's going to ask me what location do, we, do I want to apply this. Well I already have it selected so it's pre-populated here. So I'm going to click OK and there are my spark lines. Step 8 in my instructions is to modify my spark lines. Well in this case, in this example, or in this exercise, I want to add my markers in my spark line. So in order to do that I want to make sure I'm on my design tab here and I'm going to come over to the show group. Again, I want to have my range selected first. If I don't have this selected, these won't, this ribbon won't appear. So once I have this selected, I'm going to go to my show group and click on markers. And when I click this, I can see that my markers are indicated here, indicating quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Now from here, I want to apply a particular um, style. So I'm going to click the more button for my gallery, my styles gallery. And the style I'm looking for is style accent to darker 25. Well if I cursor over these it'll tell me the name of it. This one is style accent to no darker. This is star, uh, style accent to darker 25. This is the one we're looking for. So I'll click this and it changes that color.